Welcome to Kindness and Light. My name is Lisa, and I would like to talk to you tonight about dolls, haunted dolls. What makes a haunted doll so scary that we have loved them all of our lives as little kids? We've hold it on, held on to our teddy bears and our dolls. Mine was Mrs. Beasley from the, the television show Family Affair. Now she's like a Wesley Adams doll. She's got her head cut off, but I, she's 53 years old, and I loved her so much. She was my life. She wiped away my tears. She held on to me while I was scared of the closet monsters. She kissed away my boo-boos, my owies. And made me feel like I was the only person in the world that she loved. And I loved her so much, and I still do, 52 years, or 53 years later. One day, I was new in my heart for some reason. One day, I would go to Goodwill and find another Mrs. Peasley doll sitting on the shelf. And there she was. Sitting on the shelf, just waiting for me to come in. And as soon as I walked in, I seen her and ran over and picked her up. Now, I didn't have the heart to chop off her head and put on my Mrs. Beasley doll's head. And I thought, hmm, maybe she could be a two-headed doll. Because I'm loving to the macabre. But no, I didn't. I kept it separate. And she is just another doll in my collection. So what makes the dolls so scary? Is it their eyes that follow you throughout the room? Or are they just cold black and has no, no sense of life in them? Is it because we love them too much and our spirits and our energy are transformed into theirs? Or is it the, just an empty shell that spirits can inhabit it, habitate? Whatever it is, there is a island that no one should go to, especially if they are terrified of dolls. And that is the Island of Dolls. And it is located in Mexico City in the Aztec Canals. Now this doll island has um, been featured on several different ghost, ghost hunter shows. And um, it was more or less about a guy named Don Barrera, who he became a hermit on this secluded little island, and he found a drowned little girl once and her doll. Well, to appease the spirit of this drowned little girl, he hung the doll up in the trees. And for 50 years, the man lived on the island and put up dolls to make peas for this little girl he found and drowned in the canal. And after he died 50 years later, and coincidentally he died drowned in the same spot, he supposedly found this little girl. He, people today would go and put dolls up to appease their spirits both their spirits, the little girls, and Barreras. So that's kind of neat, and I would like to go there and just to see it. Um, but in another way, you're walking onto an island that's got thousands and thousands of dolls on it because people, anytime people would come and visit it, they would bring a doll and they would take it and they would hang it up in the houses and the trees and the wherever they can hang it or put it to appease these two people. Now, when I get into the major dolls, the dolls that are possessed, um, these dolls are real dolls. They are in museums, most of them, and you cannot touch them because they are supposedly so evil that you're not even supposed to really look at them. Um, and I just wanted to kind of put that disclaimer up there. This is for entertainment purposes, and I want to make sure that everybody knows that. 
getting back to why we're so terrified of our animals and our toys, well, look at Toy Story. They come to life as soon as we leave the room. They come to life when we sleep. They come to life anytime. So would not make a child scared of their toys? Yeah, I think so. I think it would. Um, the first doll I'm going to talk about tonight is, it's not Chucky. Chucky is a fictional doll that people made up in gathering all of these dolls that I'm going to be talking about into one monster doll for the movies. Now, speaking of movies, the first doll I'm going to talk about is Annabelle. Annabelle was a gift to a nurse named Angie and Don. Donna and her mother had given her this doll for a graduation present from nursing school and as soon as she had taken it home she had a roommate named Angie as soon as they got it in the apartment things started happening footsteps the doll would be moving different rooms and they got a hold of a psychic and asked them why this doll was doing this and she said that it was a spirit of a little girl named Annabelle. So the, the two girls offered it in their home but little did they know that they were offering an evil spirit in there. Um, they had had this doll and then it started writing things all over the walls, all over papers and stuff like that. It says, help us. Help us, Lou. Now, Lou was a friend of these two women who lived in the apartment. And it kept on saying, help us, help us, Lou. And so the girls got a hold of the infamous Ed and Lorraine Warren. And I will be doing another video up exclusively about them. Ed and Lorraine Warren, Warren came out and their demonologist... And they exercised the house and then they took Annabelle and took it home with them and she has been in their home now that they're past both past she has been in their home and in a museum that's not open to the public anymore but is in their museum locked away in a glass case that says do not touch and it's blessed twice a month by a minister to make sure that it you know, she does no harm to anyone else. But they truly believe that she is a demon inside that. The second doll I'm going to be talking about is Robert the doll. Now, Robert the doll was a little tiny doll for Eugene Robert Otto. And this doll was made by Eugene's um, servant like a maid she handmade this little tiny doll and gave it to him as a gift and it meant so much to gene otto that he loved it and loved it and loved it clear up till he died but he was also scared of it he was scared that sometimes when he woke up the doll was sitting at the end of the bed smiling at him or he would destroy his room or he'd hear footsteps running up and down the stairs to the attic that was Robert. When Jean got married and his parents had passed away and moved, Jean and his wife moved into the house that his parents had, he took the doll, Robert, and his wife, Jean's wife, kept on feeling uneasy about Robert the doll. She kept on saying, something's wrong, something's off, put it away in the attic. So, being a good husband, Jean took the doll and put it away in the attic and he set it in his um, little chair up in the attic. Now, during this time, they kept on hearing footsteps in the attic. Children outside would say they seen Robert the doll sitting next to the window in his rocking chair. And when Jane passed away, the family who bought the house had a little girl and she was so happy finding that Robert the doll. Oh, look at this the little doll. He's, he's so cute. Um, 
But then it turned into terror when she told her mom and dad that Robert was going to kill her. Now, Robert was going to kill her. Of course, you're instantly going to take and get rid of this doll, right? I mean, excuse me, I will buy something else for you. <laughs> It was, wasn't long after that that the parents, of course, sold the doll and got rid of it instantly. Now Robert lives in a museum in a glass case in East Mar Martello Museum in Key West. And you can go there, but you must respect Robert and you must ask him to please, can I take a picture with you? I'd be honored to take a picture of you and respect him. Because if you don't, Robert could put a curse on you. Speaking of curses, Peggy the doll can haunt you even if you look at her through pictures. Her eyes, a green colored eyes, watch you as you move through the room. Now Peggy is um, inhabited by an impish spirit who likes to cause trouble and stuff. But the most renowned thing she's known for is, if you look at her, she will ha make you have a heart attack. She will make your heart race and you could have a heart attack. So she is in Zach Baggins Haunted Museum in Las Vegas. Um, several people have had heart attacks after holding or seeing Peggy. So she is locked away in a glass case once again in a, like I said, in Zach Baggins' um, Haunted Museum. Now, Zach, I believe, has a full room of dolls that he has. So Caroline was another one. Her, her owners, she would whisper in their ear. She was a prankster, and not since 2004 was the last time she was ever seen. So no one knows what happened to her. And no one knows where she's at now. So please be on the lookout for a doll named Caroline. Another one is Amanda the doll. Now this doll was made in 1884. And she has been up on for sale 20 times on eBay. And people keep on trying to sell her because she says... They say that she's given them scratches on several different occasions. And she walks around the house and moves around the house. So, that is Amanda the doll. Another one is the Death Elmo doll. And this is a true story. Yes, an Elmo doll. It is in 2008. It's an Elmo Knows Your Name doll. And... The parents bought it for their little toddler, and each time he squeezed it, it would say, Kill James, and that's what the little boy's name was, James. It says, Kill James. Kill James. So the parents, of course, took it back to Fisher-Price and said, What's going on? Something's going on with this doll. How could it, why would it say, Kill James? And so Fisher-Price investigated it and gave the parents a voucher for a new doll. I'd be like, F that, excuse my language, but no way I would. I don't want anything from you again, you know, if you're going to kill my toddler. The other one is the Devil Babies doll. Now, the, the famous Marie Laveau, the voodist, queen, queen of voodoo, she was supposedly had a baby with the devil, and it was a devil baby. Now, that was just rumors or whatever, but the townsfolk would take and make these little devil dolls to protect them from the evil baby. And they were called devil doll dolls. Now, they were carved out, and so it protected them from Marie Laveau, supposedly, and voodoo. You can buy these still today. Patty Reed's doll. Now this one has got an, a very unique story. Now Patty Reed was a part of the Donner Party. Now in America there is a story, and it's true, in our history, there was the Donner Party. 
and they were a group of settlers who settled started west to get new land now of course they hit a snowstorm and the mountains and they decided they ran out of food and so the only thing left was for them to eat the dead and this became the first cannibalism in America that we know of um, that was horrible and this little doll was the Peggy Reed the little girl that had died there and it is in the Donner Museum um, the next one is Harold the doll now Harold the doll has a pulse supposedly um, he has his own YouTube channel it's Anthony Panada, um, I believe is his name, and I will try to look it up after I'm done with my video. And like I said, I want to kind of do a one-on-one -on -one with each doll and tell you kind of a little bit of the backstory of each doll separately. And anyway, this child supposedly died, but the doll has a pulse, and it went into this doll, Harold. Then there's Letta. Letta is like a puppet, type of, type of marionette type puppet. And she is known for mischief and running around and causing all different kinds of disturbances through your house. Her name is Letta because it says, Letta me out. That is what's short for let, or Letta is short for letting me out. And she's in the South Wales, Australia. Now, I want to tell you a few personal things about dolls um, that kind of give you the heebie-jeebies. And like I said, maybe you'd think twice about buying a secondhand doll from a thrift store or a garage sale or anything. A uh, lady that I know who um, her son is Corey off a of crack in the box. Please subscribe to him. Um... Her name is Pixie, and I wanted to make sure that I got her last name right. Pixie Winter Travers, and she's a crap goth. And I had spoken to her the other night about her doll that she received as a birthday gift for her youngest daughter. Well, once they received this doll, it was a Saskin Reborn Bonnie doll. Now, if you've ever seen these dolls, they're scary just looking at them. You know, like, no way. They're so realistic that it's just horrifying um, how real they look. Right down to their little toes, to everything. They've got hair and eyelashes and just all of it's real. Um, but... See, I'm talking about possessed dolls, and now we're getting a storm. Um, but I really want to get this in before we our power goes out. She got this doll for her daughter, and or someone gave it to her daughter for her birthday. And as soon as they got it in the house and opened it up, her little girl started crying. And I mean just crying and sobbing, and it's like, no way, I don't want this doll. She was absolutely terrified. And if you've ever met this little girl... She says she's not that type of person where she gets scared so easily and she don't start breaking down and crying. Um, but this little girl was just terrified of it. And then the dad seen it and he said, no way we're keeping that in the house. Nuh -uh. They all had this overwhelming fear and overwhelming shadow type situation that uh, they did not like at all. Well... Pixie put it in back in the box and it was a pretty heavy box, you know, like big heavy cardboard. And so she put it back in the box. She salted it, put salt all the way around the box and put, saged it. And then she put it away for like three or four months. Nobody touched it. And 
one day she got it out and said, I think this doll is a boy. Instead, it was dressed as a little girl. Well, this she thought this doll had the sense of a boy. And the reason why she got it out was because there were flies being attracted to this box. And it was odd because it was the wrong time of the year for flies to be, you know, in the house or anything like that. So she taken the doll out dressed it in little boy's clothes and named it Sebastian. Now Sebastian was now forever its name and she took it outside and she smudged it with sage and did the ritual and everything and as she said as soon as she put the clothes on and saged it and everything there was like a lifting of uh clearing of the the darkness and everything you know light and it was more airy and more everything and the flies were gone and it was all really weird but the the people her family excuse me her family was so scared of this doll still that she says she's got to keep it out in the hallway in a little cradle and she's the only one that touches it really and she rocks it once in a while and um but she said her husband's just every time he goes by it, he wants to uh, throw a blanket over its face and stuff because it's so terrifying. You just know that something was bad about this doll. So, yes, I think that those dolls would creep me out. A lot of people are terrified of dolls. Um, it's something about their blank expression on their face or in their eyes or their eyelashes and um, everything. And I think that people would, uh, yeah, I don't know how people would even have a doll like that in their house. I'm sorry. I would freak out completely. Um, no, no, thank you. So be aware of those dolls because they are very scary and they are so realistic. And people, of course, collect dolls. So I guess my warning to you is make sure that you... Think twice before the secondhand dolls. Think twice about getting dolls if you're older. And uh, watch your P's and Q's. If you hear bumps in the night, if you see anything strange, make sure that you get rid of the doll as fast as you can or have it blessed beforehand. With that, that's the end of this segment. I hope you join me again on kindness and light. Please share your kindness and share your beacon of light to make someone's day a better place. Peace. <laughs>